Hello guys, and welcome to another Air Tycoon Online 3 episode. I have not made an episode in probably 3 or 4 days, I just haven't really felt like it. But, in the meantime, that hasn't stopped me from playing a little bit of ATO here and there, and growing this company pretty rapidly. Um, if we take a look at my income, I've basically reached a point where it's quite significantly higher than uh, when I last played. If I go into like my quarters, as you guys can see, my quarters have been uh, increasing r quite rapidly, um, and my yearly is now, you know, approaching half a billion, which is pretty nice. That means I'm making more than 500k a turn now. Um, it's also meant I've climbed up to third. Uh, the gap between me and second is considerable, but I'm climbing fast enough so it's not going to be many turns before I'm there. And the gap between me and first place. Um, is shrinking as a percentage gap, so I should be catching up to him as well. I have noticed he has not been expanding very rapidly himself, um, so that should mean I should be able to catch up with him um, given enough time. Now, what I am doing is I am buying the Boeing 747 SP um, because this is kind of a medium large size plane. Um, the two kind of size planes I like to use is I've so far been using either 707s or 747s, um, like 100s, and there's very little in, like in between uh, you no know, a 747 400 and a 747, uh, or 747 200 and a 747 uh, and a 707. Basically the gap is too big. So I wanted a, a plane which would give me a little bit more uh, control over the size so those routes where I think eh, I would just don't think it's worth putting a 707 on this route um, now I finally have a plane for that I have the 747 SP uh, which is you know a pretty pretty good plane but not so great that I feel like I'm wasting it um, it also allows me to reach cities which are far much farther away than before um, so I can do some pretty cool routes with that like uh, for example, I can reach, okay, I cannot reach there, apparently, but um, there's a lot of new routes, basically, which I can find with these uh, these cities, and I might consider making some stopovers with those in a bit, but for now, I kind of wanted to show you guys my routes, because a lot of my routes are doing really well. As you guys can see, um, it, this world has very little competition, so the vast majority are monopolies. But even competitions, of which I have 82, um, they're all mostly 100% occupancy and highly profitable. Um, and if you look at my freaking, uh, where is it? Where is it? My monopolies, of course, almost all of them are 100%. And there's some areas where there's like 95% occupancies. But like, honestly, who really cares? Like, these are very still very profitable routes. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, let's continue to use some of these 747 SPs. Um, as you guys can see, I'm running out of options to stop over to London, basically. Um, and I don't really want to do it direct, but uh, let me see if I can find a city over here uh, to add this route to. Um, as you guys can see, I'm actually very thorough with... Wow. Um... Well, <laughs> London to Miami, holy shit, um, I better get a Concorde for that. I feel like somebody may have left um, who was hubbed in London, because it seems unlikely that a route of that level would be left. So I'm going to take this with the 747 SP and replace it with a Concorde later on, um, because that's definitely a route which can fill up with a Concorde. And it's just fun to have, you know, a bunch of Concords flying around making ridiculous amounts of money. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, what should I do with the other route? Um, I think what I'll do is I'll do Orlando to London like this in, in a competition route. Like, that's just some 707s. I'm not too concerned about competing with that. I'm pretty sure uh, I can charge more with my uh, SPs and still achieve the better occupancy because... Wait, uh, schedule by slot. Oh, shoot. I gotta use the other airport. Um, there we go. 
and then we can stop over to Cebu. Um, this is another route where we can upgrade it to a larger 747 later on, like a 2-200 or something like that, um, and then move this onto one of the current 747 routes, um, which is kind of my plan. Um, I have a lot of 707 routes, which could definitely use a 747 SP, and I plan to move the 747 SPs onto those routes, um, and then proceed to take um, seven uh, those freaking 707s and put them onto brand new routes. Um, but for now, I still have tons and tons of routes to claim like this one, um, you know, more future 747-200 routes. Um, but yeah, these are all you know, really great. Um, I'm very happy about this world. There's little low competition, which does make it kind of boring, I guess, because it feels like a little bit like PvE, where uh, I'm just taking routes and there's nothing to compete with. But at the same time, I do enjoy that, <laughs> so... Um, I'm personally not going to complain too much about a world with no competition. So, yeah. Anyways, let's see if I can continue to find some more routes Denpasar. Uh, yeah, we should take Denpasar. Denpasar is a pretty good, pretty good route. Um, as you guys can see, this I'm just using the extra range of the 747SP right now to claim a lot of the routes that I haven't been able to take already. Um, uh, Lunt Frankfurt to a city like Asuncion with... 300 combined business and tour is more than capable of filling up a large aircraft of I think this is too far yep um, so I'll need a 747-200 to do that mm. let's see what other kind of routes can we do I do have soul so let me see if I can make any good routes with soul now as you can see the like trio of American cities which are around 400 plus Memphis are all available but I don't really want to be taking these routes direct because I just don't think there's the the business for that basically. There's not enough numbers. So instead I want to do stopovers, but there's not really a lot of options in Southeast Asia. Like we have Padong, so I guess I'll use that. Um but yeah, as you guys can see there's not many options to make the stopovers stop into. So yeah, that's that's a little bit unlucky. Um, it's one of the harder things to think about what I want to do. Probably what I do want to do is uh, when the seven six sevens come out, um, which have you know like almost twelve thousand range, the seven six seven two hundred. I'll use those to take some of these routes, which I don't think are worth taking direct, and take those directly in that way. Um, as you guys can tell right now, the main restricting factor for my airline is still the cost as you can see I have 150 leased 747s and my only reason for having so many leased aircraft is just because I would like to have 747s but I can't afford them uh, so I have to lease them you know uh, so do we have access to Hanoi Hanoi is too far but Kuming is good and Sanya is too far so that's unlucky because these two are great cities I should claim them with 747-200s later um, but for now, let's do Kuming to Los Angeles and stop it to something nearby. Um, let's see, we have uh, we have Toledo, so let's do that one. Um, okay, we're one slot short, but we'll fix that later on. Um, but yeah, these are all really good routes. Um, if you if you're if you guys are in a world where there's little competition like this. Um, I would recommend using the strategy of just opening hubs in as many cities as possible. Um, like, as you guys can see, I already have 10 hubs. Um, though, because this is Air Tycoon Online 3, I'd recommend you do take a considerable amount of routes in each hub before you move on to the next for profitability purposes. Um, I noticed that every time you add a hub, it slightly increases uh, some of your expenses. I'm not sure exactly which ones, but they, it seems to increase the brand expense by about 10000 And if you want to keep your name value high in that city, that costs about another 20000 So you have to be making far more than 30000 from each hub in order for it to be worth it, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that's just, you know, a little something to keep in mind. Um, another thing is, there's all these routes like these that go to uh, cities like Barcelona. For me available right now and i'm starting to think i should probably be taking them um now these are previously too far but now i can't take them 
Uh, it's just a matter of where can I stop them over to. Uh, I think... I could be using cities like these, but what 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 planes are flying on those routes currently? I don't know. Um, yeah, okay, so it looks like our best option is Montevideo. Um, I'm not sure how good Barcelona is as a city, and if I should be considering um, not using Barcelona quite yet, but uh, I don't have very many other hubs. I have Los Angeles yet still to still to conquer i guess but i have no slots there um yeah as you guys can see paris is one of those cities where you know i've taken just about everything in range um yeah there's some like cities left but they, they don't seem worth taking ho chi minh oh i haven't taken ho chi minh to london um but this is another case of where the frick do i put the other stop to um, I, I could compete on a route like Vancouver. Uh, let me see if I can go to Kona. I cannot. Um, why is that invalid, by the way? Not that sharp. Oh, well, maybe I can find something over here. Dakar? Mm, Marac? St. Louis. Are there any cities down here which will allow me to make the stopover? It looks like the best one is Dakar, actually, so we'll just use Dakar. Uh, of course, London to Dakar is not a great route, but because there's so few schedules on a route, uh, which is quite close range, it should fill up anyway. Um, one thing I'm curious about when you compare this game to real life is in this game, the longer range you get, the kind of lower the demand gets for a route. Um... I'm really curious to know if that's the way things are in real life. Because I feel like there's a lot of long-range routes with incredibly high demand. Um, like LA to to any like major European hub, for example. Like Those routes have huge demand and it could fill up multiple, multiple huge aircraft in real life. Um, at least I would believe that to be the case. And I'm wondering like if that's reflected accurately in this game. Because... The number of passengers, which would, because like, for example, London to, uh, or New York to Atlanta will have a huge amount of passengers traveling between them in real life, but if that passenger count is the same between um, Los Angeles and London, for example, then you're going to need a lot more planes flying on that route in order to meet the demand, because each plane can fly so many much fewer schedules basically um so it's basically for that reason i'm wondering if this game is really accurate in the way it does demand but i don't know and i guess in the end of the day it doesn't really matter too much um anyways i just gotta keep taking my routes so has crack has got an airport yet nope um it does really not seem like a lot of the nice cities are getting airports yet I can't wait till uh, Caracas gets an airport because, you know, I'll definitely jump on board on that and take all those routes as fast as possible. Anyways, I think I only have one 747 SP left. And then after this, I just want to kind of look at my routes and look at the way I have everything set up because I'm really happy about it. Um, I also want to look at the fact that this world has very little competition. I'm not really sure why, but... Um, that just seems to be the case, and, yeah, um, what's the city with, Qingdao? Yeah, Qingdao, okay, oh, I already have Qingdao to Barcelona, what else is there, uh, Mumbai, I'm at about Denpasar, nope, too far, Jakarta's taken, Ho Chi Minh, it's decent, uh, I'll go with Sanya, um, Sanya to Barcelona, Let's see if there's somewhere to stop it to, uh, I see we have Asun Asuncion, Kankin, Kankin is probably the best one, so, yeah, there we go, that's all 10 of our 747 SPs, I have 10 more, not sure if I'm going to use those on camera, probably, but, yeah, after this, I just kind of want to spend the next few minutes looking at my company, because I haven't done that for a while, where I just kind of relax and take a look 
at, you know, a lot of the routes I have. Um, so let's sort by aircraft and just take a look at how much each kind of these routes are making. Now I've got to fix that. Um, but yeah, as you guys can see, oh, that's, this is a good 707. You see this one? It's making, you know, almost 4K. This one's making around 3K. This one's making around 3K. Whoops, that's an accident. Um, th this this seven, 707, okay, let's reverse the order, first of all. But, yeah, as you guys can see, DC-8's, you know, making around 3K. Uh, 747-SPs, they're averaging 6 to 7K. Uh, 7K, 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 okay, probably averaging 7K. Um, 6.5K, 7K, 7K, 7.2K. 6.8k 747sps are really good because they fly incredibly fast um and that gives you a lot of schedules basically another thing is routes like um as you notice all of these are full literally all of them not one of them has decided to not be full um, but this sp is making you know 6k this sp is 7k um these are very good profitable planes and this needs more schedules right i need to wait for lax Slot requests. Um, these are all new, of course. And then onto our seven four seven dash two hundreds. These are all incredible. Like they make around ten k per. Um, I would buy more if I could because it's it's true that if I bought seven oh sevens instead of seven four sevens, I would be making the same amount in essence. Um, but I don't even know if that's true anymore in Air Tycoon Online too because some of the expenses particularly in my opinion i think services investments and advertising investment kind of increase with the amount of routes you have so it makes larger aircraft slightly more efficient in that sense but aside from that um i could be buying seven for 707s and it'd be making a similar amount but it's just so much less per route you know what i mean i would have to make a thousand 707 routes to equivalent 220 um 747 routes so using 747s really does speed up the game now the 7047100s are the exact same as the 200s um except for the problem that um uh, they're leased so a lot of them are you're making around the lease expense less than what they should be so you guys see we'll see that some of these um have pretty bad profit like for example this one man managua to london to daegu um it's only making 6k but if it was not leased it'd be making 9 plus k um so yeah all down the board these could all be making more but um i have to wait until i can afford proper 747s to get rid of a lot of the leased ones now onto the 7 uh 37 200s i really like these planes um as you guys can see i've priced them so that the occupancy is just between 93 and 100 which is in my opinion the most efficient range for pricing um and yeah, these are all making 1.5 to 2k. So it's pretty good for such a small aircraft. Basically, I was buying a lot of these in the beginning because they were cheap. And they allowed me to lease more 747. So that's not really a concern anymore because I want to get away from leasing now. Um, because I want to be more efficient per action I do. Basically, for every route I create, I want to make more. I can't keep, you know, playing a game where I have to open 300 routes to increase my profit by 100k. Um, that's not really efficient. I'd rather um, make 100 routes, increase my route by 100k. It takes less time, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, and now we're on to the 707s. These are kind of um, all very efficient as well. As you guys can see, each one is making approximately 3k when you add the halves of the stopovers. Uh, 3 to 3.3k is probably the average uh, somewhere in that range. So yeah, that's basically all the routes I have. Also, as you guys can see, I have direct ones too. So these are like a really clear indication of how much 707s are making. They are making around 3K. I think the pricing is a little bit too high because you can get this up to 3.3K uh, if the pricing is perfect, but I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with that. And at the end of the day, it's a small difference. So I got some direct ones too, um, just because there's no way to stop over a lot of these, like Seoul to Benzaghi, for example, it's just a hard location to do stopovers because there's nothing in the other like locations. As you guys can also see, Los Angeles stopovers also, or Los Angeles directs also doing great. Um, I do want more 707s to, to make these direct routes, but um, the problem is I don't really want to be buying them anymore because this is really late into the game. 
So like it's down to 63% satisfaction. And at that level, it's going to decrease to to zero so fast or decrease to 5% so fast. So I kind of want to wait for the next good long range planes to come out like the 767. Um, I think we might get Airbus 310, which I think you need to wait for the Dash 200 before you get long range though. Um, so unfortunately for now, basically I'm just going to be buying SPs. And what I'm going to be doing with the SPs is once I run out of, you know, new routes, which I can be taking with the SP, like once I'm, you know, done taking Los Angeles to the nicer cities in Europe, Vienna, um, Warsaw, Budapest, uh, what else? Palermo, uh, Tripoli, uh, what else, what else do we have? Uh, probably Chinsau, Donetsk, and, you know, these guys over here. Basically, once I've done taking all of those, um, because, you know, it's kind of worth it, because LA is the largest city, I think, um, I think it's LA is the largest city in the world. Um, I think I want to be taking those routes. Um, like even LA to one of these Russian cities like Um If I stop over it and land it in just any city over here, like um, the nice thing about the Northern Russian cities is st stopover routes become proper, like even like in like this direction, you see what I mean? Um, so I can use cities like Rosa, Port-au-Prince, uh, not Kingston yet, but, uh, but like, uh, I can use all of these cities down here, Cape Coral, Freeport, Nassau, um, and only about this, you know, angle it becomes improper, but I think I can even use things like that, yeah, uh, and, uh, Chihuahua and that kind of, this kind of, this kind of route, basically, um, obviously I could make more from LA to Chihuahua, then by using a 747 SP with a stopover route, which would give it like maybe five schedules or something like that. Um, but the thing about that is I don't really see it as I'm giving the route five schedules. I'm just seeing it as if I were to just be taking all these short range routes directly, um, that would give me no options for stopovers left. And it would also mean um, I'd have to request so many slots, which is no longer really an option because to request slots takes, you know, 15 minutes. And when you're trying to expand your company rapidly later on in the game, which this is later on in the game, uh, it takes too long to to wait 15 minutes to make a single route. You know what I mean? Um, one slot request while using primarily long range can make you multiple routes um, where it takes two slot requests to make one close range route. So that's basically my reason behind that. But anyways, guys, uh, I'm going to be right back once these few planes get delivered. Hello guys, I just want to welcome you back. Uh, I just wanted to talk about one little thing, um, and that is <coughs> maintenance depots. As you guys are going to I have seven maintenance depots, and it's saving 104k a turn. Now, seven maintenance depots cost a seven times six gems, so that's 42 credits, and I'm making 100k a turn basically off of that. Like. Um, the expense saving is literally like a hundred percent, um, like back a hundred percent of my like money back in, um, basically. So I literally have a hundred thousand lower profit if I went for that expense saving. Um, so each maintenance depot is ridiculously effective and will continue to get more effective as I increase the number of routes coming out of my hubs. Um, so that's just something else to keep in mind. Another thing is I like to buy lounges in my hubs. I have no idea, by the way, if the lounges are ever worth it. But if we do look at my prices, across the board, I have higher business class prices and higher economy class prices to achieve the same occupancy. So 96, 98, but the business class is higher, for example, price. Um, and this is across the board. And the extra point one, 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 you're able to charge or like two or three percent off each route for business class may not seem like a, a lot in my opinion but i think it does add up um because each one of those extra seats makes you know a few extra k um like for every route like just a few extra k like literally 1k not like when i say like k i'm referring to millions 
I should be saying ends just to make things more clear. But anyways, like for every route, just making, you know, a few thousand more, it adds up to millions eventually. Um, and I think, I think it's probably worth it. It definitely more than pays for itself. A lounge is only four credits. Um, yeah, anyways. Ooh, I don't have one into Denver. Let me get some slots there so I can, you know, compete on that. But, uh, yeah, anyways, basically what I was saying is, I can't remember. <laughs> but basically, oh yeah, what I was saying is, I think fuel, uh, lounges and the other thing, uh, let me get on my trim, the other thing, uh, maintenance depots are definitely very, very worth it. Um, but something that, in my opinion, is not worth it is... I don't think I would consider, um, I don't think I would consider the fuel tanks worth it, and I basically did an experiment in my last server where I bought a shit ton of fuel tanks, and while they did save an enormous amount of money, and I mean enormous, like, um, I didn't like them because they had one weakness, and that was they're not always 100% active. What I mean by that is, even though I have the ability to use them, um, like, and they save, you know, 150k in the one turn, I do decide to use them. Um, the problem is not that um, they're not worth it when you do using them, it's just there's too many turns where you can't use them. And it's not you can't use them because you don't want to use them, it's you can't use them um, because you're not online. And this increases as you get later, later and on into the game, where you only log on, basically, to replace your aircraft. Um, the other original Air Tycoon Online 3 World, which I started playing on a while ago, I'm still keeping it alive, I'm still replacing the aircraft on it. And one of the most annoying things, um, not the most annoying things, and one of the more annoying things is knowing that my fuel tanks are being wasted all the time. Um, they exist, yep. I use them sometimes, but really not enough for them to ever be worth it anymore. So unfortunately, those fuel tanks are just sitting around doing nothing most of the time, um, which is a big shame because uh, those fuel tanks are really um, cost a lot of credits. Like I could have bought an airport or something with the amount of credits I spent on on fuel tanks in that world, and the airport would be making you know fifty k every single turn. Like, um, not the uh not the what was it making now instead of making 50k every single turn i think it's now making like um like 150k once per day when i log on to that world or something like that so obviously not nearly as worth it as as you would have hoped for basically now i'm going to take this direct because tripoli is just really really big um so yeah i guess that's it for my los angeles hub for now but anyways, yeah, like, I don't think fuel tanks are worth it, um, unless you either get a script to automatically refill the fuel tanks, then I think that could be worth it. Uh, another situation where I think it could be worth it to buy fuel tanks is if, for some reason, you're literally online every day of the week, like, every single turn that passes, then you can probably get some wicked value out of your fuel tanks. Um, yeah, if you remember to fill them up, basically, I do think they are very worth it because you'll be creating, um, you know, 100, 150k kind of range, extra profit every single turn, um, just by remembering to fill your fuel tanks. Now, how is the competition on that? That is terrible looking. I've got three competitors. They're all pretty bad, but look at those prices. Like, they're shooting themselves in the foot by trying to make that kind of route. So, I'm going to make a route like this sold to Louisville maybe not Louisville because there's a lack of slots there right now so let's do Memphis um, let's make that a route uh, it's not great uh, Kathmandu but um, that route is once again so short compared to the sold to Memphis leg I think this is a worth it kind of route um, anyways I'm starting to run short on new 747 SP routes once I find that there's no longer routes, which I think I really kind of want to make with my 747 SPs, um, then my plan will be to switch gear and start um, Tashkent. No, I love Tashkent. 
done shabby, you know, Mashad, not proper yet. Islamabad, proper. Okay, I don't want Islamabad, really. Colombo, male. Eh. Male and Islamabad are about the same, but Islamabad is more balanced, so I'll take Islamabad. Basically, once there's no more routes, which I really feel like I think I should be taking with the 747 SPs, then I'll start to use the SPs to replace existing 707s, and then put those 707s on um, on some new good routes. Um, but anyways, I don't think that's going to happen for a while. I'm probably going to need at least another 20 to 30 more SPs before I hit that point. Um, at the moment, there's still a lot of great routes left. Like, for example, a keen walk to Frankfurt, a route that, you know, previously wasn't possible without a 747-100, uh, but I d didn't think that was worth it, because, you know, Dash 100 is kind of expensive. Um, so, yeah, now, as you guys can see, I'm having the problem where there's nowhere to land, um, because all the cities are taken, and generally what I'll do in this case is I'll find a route, uh, say like this, San Francisco, I'll take a look at the competition, all right, too much competition, forget about it. Okay, then we'll go on to the next city, San Diego. San Diego's not great, so if there's even just a little bit of tough competition, don't really want. Now look, Alex Air, um, you have a terrible plane on this route, so I could really consider to compete with that, but I just want to look at the rest. So I'll look at Atlanta. Atlanta, three layers, 747-200 stopover, but with no name value in either cities. So I know I'll win in that that uh, department so I think I'll compete with this one um, I find that these competition routes are so stable and profit that there's actually like no difference in success um, if there's you know multiple layers of like high satisfaction um, what else high satisfaction um, and high name value competitors then I don't think these routes are worth it. But if you look at my competition routes um, and sort by occupancy, like I know these are upticks, but like, let me just click a route and show you guys this, the general, st okay, well, this is an exception because I'm guessing this route was created after. Uh, I don't think I'd usually decide to compete on LA to Cancun. So uh, that was a pretty bad example, but this is a route I would decide to compete on. Um, as you can see, the profit is not too unstable. Uh, like, uh, it's pretty good on upticks, as you can see, and pretty bad on downticks, but it's still pretty pretty good considering how much competition there is. See, a route like this is far more stable, even though there's four competitors. This route, uh, not too stable, but um, as you guys can see, a lot of them are. Paris to Hong Kong, for example, very stable. Uh, this route, Paris to Atlanta, very stable. You see what I mean? Um, a lot of these routes, uh, even though there's you know, three competitors on this route, um, a lot of them, you know, have been upgrading their aircraft and stuff since when I made the route, but it's still not even doing too bad. Um, as you can see, very stable. Uh, that's just a 737, who cares? Uh, that's no competition. Um, but a route like this, as you guys can see, still very stable. Um, so yeah, the stable, consistent profit is something I really like to see. Uh, especially the one competitor routes are usually very, very good. Like this is a two competitor route, still doing fine. You know what I mean? All these guys have low name value and stuff like that. So yeah, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm experimenting with comp competition and most of the time I'm coming out on top. There are situations like this one where, you know, I probably shouldn't be competing, but anyways, I've been having fun doing that. But anyways, I think that's enough and yeah, see you guys next time.